Good evening, everybody. It's good to see all of you joining us tonight. However you're joining us, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, uh, we are happy to see you guys tonight. Glad that you're with us. I'm glad that you're joining us. Preacher Don and I are here, and we're going to take some time tonight. We're going to go over a prayer request. We're going to uh, study some scripture. I'll go ahead and give you a heads up. We're going to be in Acts chapter 1 tonight, so if you'd like to turn there, maybe get it on your phone or however you want to uh, do that. Maybe turn there since you're on the phone watching us probably. But I do want to welcome you. I'm going to give it a few more minutes and let everybody that wants to join have some time to get on. I really, really am happy that you're here. Um, it's been an exciting time. Uh, even though we um, haven't been able to meet together in the sanctuary, it's, it was great last Wednesday, and I hope that we'll have Amen. another good service. Not um, anything about us, but a good service where we can come and gather around God's Word and, and, and join together. I do want to make a few announcements want to remind you that Sunday we'll be doing drive-in. <clears throat> so our drive-in service will be Sunday morning. We're going to do another drive-in Sunday evening. At least that's the plan right now. And uh, we're going to be doing a canned food drive for the Lord Cares. Yes. If you've got any canned foods you'd like to drop off, you can bring those. We'll put them in a box out there, and we'll hold on to them. Um, and we'll deliver them this week. Now, <clears throat> they're asking for more canned meats. So if you've got that, um, one canned meat is just as good as having two vegetables. I know sometimes we want to. Punch it, you know, bring it all in with like 12 green beans. Uh, Bubba Player and I did that one time with pork and beans, and I don't know how many people got pork and beans, but I know we bought about 100 cans of them, I believe. So uh, they're asking for canned meat, if you can do that. If you'd like to donate, you're more than welcome to. Uh, that is going to be Sunday morning and Sunday evening. want to remind you about GiveLify. Some have asked about that. Amen. We'll get that posted on our temple, um, on our feed as we move along tonight. But again, it is a good time to be here. I'm going to uh, pray, and uh, we'll get started with this tonight. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, it's a great day. It's a great day to be here, Lord. We thank you for all the many, many blessings, God. God, tonight specifically, I pray for this this prayer meeting, Lord, this service. I pray that you'd be with me and the pastor, Lord, as we uh, gather around your word, Lord, and try to feed off of it and try to feed our flock, Lord, and and uh, serve. serve uh, as we go into this prayer time later on, Lord, I just pray for that. God, I pray that you would meet needs. Pray that you would be there, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're still saving people. Yes. Love you, Lord, and ask you to bless us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank you guys for being with us. And I want to join in with Brother Donald and say uh, we're, it's an honor to be able to be here. We're going to uh, start in our in our in reading of our scripture. We're going to pass this thing back and off about like we did last week. Uh, guys, it's been a it's been a joy mm -hmm. for us. It's been it's been fun for us. I, I've I don't want this to sound strange if someone doesn't know, but I've been I've been studying studying in a whole new different way, really lately than 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 I used to, and it's just been so so helpful to me. I can tell you honestly, I have grown. I have grown since uh, since we have not been able to come to the church setting, so to speak, the church building. And uh, we want to begin reading the scripture. If you have your Bibles, Acts chapter one. As we closed out John. Amen. We're jumping right into Acts and. Uh, I want, to, I want to share this scripture for you, and we'll go back and look at the verses one by one. The Bible says in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was After he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Guys, yeah, so we're, we're going we're gonna to look at each one of the verses. Uh, we'll find Luke here. Luke is the author of Acts, and Luke is writing to uh, Theophilus. Theophilus' name, it means lover of God or God lover. And uh, we wanted to uh, share this with you. This is the beginning. It says here, in the first book, O Theophilus, Luke is telling him in the first book, which is what? If this is the second book, there's the first book. The first book was Luke, Luke the Gospel of Luke. And uh, he's writing both Luke and Acts to this, this man named Theophilus. We're, it really doesn't tell, and we're not sure who he is. As Brother Donald mentioned a little while ago, the benefactor, one that supported, one that uh, made this possible. Uh, it's also said that he was, they called him O Honorable or uh, a, a special name. Oh, oh, it was more like when Paul called Festus and and Felix when he went to Rome. He was a, a sort of a Roman official here, is what we think, or what most think the Theophilus was, and uh, probably a Roman official. Who maybe maybe later came came to be a believer. And uh, Luke calls him most excellent, though most excellent Theophilus. 
And as we mentioned, that's what uh, Paul called uh, Felix and Festus. I want you to know the book of Acts covers a, for, covers a period of about 35 years, about 35 years near uh, up to the point of A.D. 60 and 61. There's no doubt what the central focus of, of the book of Acts is, and it is it is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming on the scene, and we'll jump into that a lot deeper next week in, uh, in, in chapter 2. <clears throat> But I do believe with all my heart, the Holy Spirit's always been here. I mean, you can, all the way in Genesis, it's just the Spirit moved upon the waters. The Spirit of God's always been here, and it's always been present. But it would be a come-and-go thing. It would be a, a in, in Acts, it's where the Holy Spirit comes, and it starts to indwell in believers. It stays with them. But uh, looking at these verses, looking at these verses. The veil is torn. Pastor. The veil is torn. Amen. Amen. At the, at the cross, the veil was torn from top to bottom. And the Bible says, until the day where he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. I, I want to, there in verse 2, there's no doubt, God has already given these apostles commands, and I can tell you <laughs> from example that the only way that you can carry out the will of God, you must have the Holy Spirit present in your life. I agree. Verse 2. Verse 3 says, he presented himself alive to them after his sufferings by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. If you would, turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 6. 1 yep. Corinthians 15, 6. But it says, He presented himself alive to many after his sufferings by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom. It wasn't just one person he that saw him. It wasn't just the 11 disciples that saw him. But I don't know if you would read that verse. It says, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. At one time. Most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. When this was written, it says, some of the folks have died, he said, but at 500, 500 people at one time saw Jesus Christ alive. And by many proofs, he appeared to them and showed himself. It also says, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Guys, I know how much that I'm longing to get back in a church setting. I love this. Please don't get me wrong. In my, to, to be able to see you guys, to be able to see mm -hmm. the members, to be able to, I know it's going to be in a different, be a little different atmosphere when we do get back. I can't just run up to you like always and hug you, amen. And, but you got to understand something. These, these guys, these disciples, they, there's no doubt, they were ready to get home, Brother Don. They've been in Jerusalem a while now, and they they're, they want to go home. There's no doubt to see their family, to see their loved ones. But Jesus tells him here, before he goes, he said, I need you to wait here. I need you to stay here in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. I love this verse also because I believe it's just one more proof of the Trinity in, in God's Word. There's absolute proof here. It says, while staying with them, he, he, he who? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise. What is the promise? The promise the is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it says, the promise from who? The Father. The promise of the Father. A perfect, perfect example of the Trinity here in, in verse 4. It also says in verse 5, For John baptized with water, but you will be, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Guys, Pentecost is, is coming. Pentecost will be on the 50th day here. There was 10 days, 10 days these guys, these disciples were in the upper room together. And we'll get to that in, in the next bit of Scripture. But again, they've been gone from their family a good while, and they still have 10 days more. They're not sure how long they got to wait because Jesus didn't give them a time. I believe the hardest thing, one of the hardest things to do in our Christian walk is to wait upon the Lord. I really do. I know the promise is there. I believe the promise. But the toughest part, I believe, for most of us, it is for me, is to wait, is to wait on the Lord. But this is just one more sign of obedience, guys. You must be obedient to the Lord. He says, you guys got to wait here in Jerusalem. It says, for John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from here. When I, when I thought about baptism, immersion, immersion here, or covered, or overwhelmed, amen, that's exactly what takes place in a new believer's life. When the Spirit of God comes in, He overwhelms you, He covers you, He immerses you in the things of the Lord. Amen. If you'll stay close to Him, He will teach you and lead you. You'll, be, you'll have a new walk, a new talk, you become a new creature, and that only comes through and by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I, I, and I believe, again, I'm going to mention this and let Brother Donald jump in with, with, these, with these next verses. 
I believe the, 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 the greatest part of the book of Acts, and there's many, there's so many stories in here, man, but it's when the, God, God loves us enough that He is not going to leave us to our own vices, our own mm-hmm. chances. He says, I'm leaving, I must go away. He said, but because I'm leaving, I'm sending a comforter. And that's the promise that's talked about here in these first five verses. So don't you got I just you want I just want to mention two things. One, um, Luke here uh, mentions in verse five for John baptized with water. And Pastor, it's, it's interesting you mentioned the Trinity there because that Trinity showed up first in that Amen. baptism. Amen. When Jesus is baptized baptized by John the Baptist, there it's it's powerful. There, you know, we think of when we when we write things, when we say things, we link things together in order to make you understand something. If if Preacher, if you were trying to help me understand um, a, a certain concept or a, maybe about this box, you might start describing another box so that I could understand this box. Well, uh, Luke is saying, for John baptized with water, and he's reminding them he's this reminded. just after he includes the Trinity in conversation so that he can draw those two together. I fully believe that it's intentions. One other thing is, I, I, I don't think there's any doubt here that, that the book of Acts is a historical document. Amen. And I know that we say the whole Bible is history. I agree with that. But the book of Acts was written to provide the precise history of what happened to the disciples, um, particularly Peter and then Paul, but precisely for them. And the remarkable thing was this is not one of the 12. Amen. This is not one of the 12. Okay? So this is a believer that followed Jesus. I have no doubt about that. I witness your account here. But this is the one I believe that there were four chosen by God to pin their accounts um, and they weren't all apostles. They weren't all 12 disciples, I mean. But this is the one I think that God laid on his heart. He said, all right, you tell everybody what happened afterwards. Amen. Tell everybody what happened. So um, just very interesting. Okay, there. Can I touch one more? Yes, sir. On, on, on about waiting there in the, in the first part of, of the scripture about waiting. Some things that I wrote down earlier today and I wanted to, I wanted to share. To wait on something, to wait on something, you're not going to wait on something if there's if it's, there's not worth in it. Exactly. If if it's not worth waiting for, you're not going to wait. I wrote some things down here, like look, if I told you tomorrow I was giving out free blackberries, <laughs> please. Most of you don't even have any idea what a blackberry is. The younger ones, anyway. But man, that was the, that was the state of the oh, art thing. That was the, a state of the, the art phone. phone at one time. Mm-hmm. If I told you tomorrow I was giving out free blackberries, I doubt that there would be a line waiting to get that phone. But if I told you I was going to be passing out the latest iPhone, the newest iPhone. I'm telling you, the line would be That's from right. here to the to the square if I was giving out free. The, the wait's got to be worth it. Now, I'll go the same way as, as eating, amen. I'll wait in line for a little while at the restaurant that I enjoy. That I, Angelo's, I plug that amen. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll, wait, I'll wait for a half an hour, 45 minutes. I'm not going to wait 45 minutes at a... a I'll get myself in trouble at a fast food chain. Okay. Right. I'll get a fast right. food chain. What, number one, it's got to be worth the waiting, the eager anticipation. Amen. Number two, it's been promised. This promise that God's, this gift is going to be gift, given. Amen. It's worth the wait. It's been promised. It's a gift. Jesus giving God's gift, which is the Holy Spirit again. Perfect, perfect example of the Trinity. And Jesus has already lived up to expectation here. I mean, he's exceeded that. Amen. And you got to receive this thing. You got to receive. You can't create it, and I can't create it. It's something that God has gifted us. It's a promise. He said, "It's yours mm-hmm. if you'll accept my Son." Amen. But you got to wait for it. And the last thing, that to wait, to wait, to wait is to be tested mm-hmm. to a to a, a degree. It's to be tested. Do you really want it? Is it worth waiting on? Guys, I'll promise you one thing, and I'm going to let Brother Donald go. I, I just can't help it. It's the preacher, amen, to come. I'll promise you this thing is worth waiting for. Don't wait to be saved, amen. But when you jump in here, anything that takes place, anything, being in God's will, amen, I'll promise you, it is worth the wait. It's worth the promise. It's worth your faith in Jesus. I want you to keep in mind, too, these people were waiting, and they were having to hide and wait yep. because they weren't very popular uh, this this whole teaching of Jesus, the Roman authority wanted to squash it as soon as possible, and it's and it's going to get out more, and it's going to cause problems for the Roman Empire, the greatest empire ever in history of mankind, and and it's going to cause problems for them. And, and you would think they'd be able to stomp stomp it with their foot, and, and so these people are waiting, and they're they're being faithful. I'm going to go ahead and read verse six. It says, "So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel?" And uh, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria Amen. to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was he lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him going to heaven. This is a powerful, powerful scripture here. It's got a part of the Great Commission. It's got um, an, an account of, of this time whenever before Jesus ascended to heaven. But I want to go back to verse 6. And, and I think Preacher Don mentioned expectations a minute ago. I, I, I may have done that. But you have an expectation of God. Yeah. And you can say, well, no, I want God's will. In my life. Okay, but you have an expectation. And I'll tell you, I will tell you why. When you pray to God, you expect God to answer your prayer. Mm -hmm. Whether He answers it the way you want, you expect Him to respond. And you expect Him to because He's promised that He will. Okay, I'm not knocking you for that. What I'm saying is you have an expectation. These people here, they expected more out of God, more out of Jesus, than Jesus was going to do. In fact, Jesus was doing something totally different that was even greater. They wanted this man here to come in and restore the kingdom of Israel. Imagine this yeah. now. Imagine this. Imagine if in 30 years, America is conquered by another country. Let's say China. Okay, let's say China takes over and we're now under Chinese authority. You don't have a president. You answer to another country. Wouldn't you desire to be an American again? Wouldn't you desire to be able to um, cast votes and do the things that you could do as an American? Your patriotism would be there. These people were waiting hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And now the Romans have killed the Savior. Okay? They've, they've killed him. He's, he's God. So if there is ever an answer, if there will ever be an answer to solve their political, their social, their economic, their nationality type problems... It's Jesus. Amen. Yes, it's sir. Jesus. Yes, so sir. if all you've got to do is just restore the kingdom to Israel, Jesus. And so, listen, maybe maybe you weren't going to do it on Palm Sunday. Okay? Maybe that wasn't the time. But you can still do it, right? Mm -hmm. You see that expectation there? They're still looking for a political savior. And They're Jesus good. flips that expectation on them. He says, guys, here's the thing, though. He says, it's not for me to go spread yeah. this gospel. I've done my part, and I'm doing even more by sending you the Holy Spirit. And that's going to empower you and enable you to go out there and do what I called you to do. Sounds like today, doesn't it? He says, I'm giving you everything. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And he says, now you're going to go be my witnesses. They're saying, well, when are you going to become the king? When are you going to take yeah. over? He says, oh, no, no, no. When are you going to take over? My kingdom is not of this world. I had a professor tell me this past week that the book of Acts is definitely about the Holy Spirit. Definitely the Holy Spirit is all in it. He said the book of Acts, in fact, and he says the whole, all of Scripture is about the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and of course, that, that's, that's a, a grand, um, broader paint stroke there. But um, he is, the work that we have to do through the Holy Spirit is important, critical, critical. In fact, if it hasn't been for that work, hadn't been for that work over the past 2,000 years, we wouldn't even have the Scripture anymore. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for the church. Thank God for them. So I'm going to move on. And then in verse number 10, and these, these disciples, these 12, now I'm going to prove to you that there were more than 12 there, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to prove that in just a few minutes. Me or Preacher Don will. But um, as these people are looking, those 12 are there, or those 11 are there. And so they're, they're oh, 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 he just left. Hey, Jesus just, gee, I, well, I'm kind of relying on you, Jesus. There you go again. And, and it, yeah, they, they're looking up there at Jesus and, uh, they're, oh my, he's going to restore. No, he's not going to, no, he just told me I got to, and now he's gone. Floated away. <laughs> and it took two, two men dressed in white. And uh, these men said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up into heaven, he'll come in the same way that you saw him go. He's going to come back, but in the meantime, what did he tell you to do? He told you to go do his work and be his witnesses in Samaria and Judea and to the uttermost parts of the world. He told you to disperse now. He didn't say wait anymore. When the Holy Spirit comes, then you'll go be my witnesses. you go do my work. Now, be the church. Be the people God called you to be. He didn't say, listen, if you guys get quarantined, don't tell anybody about Jesus. <laughs> he didn't he say, did. if you can't go into the office, don't tell anybody about Jesus. He didn't say that. He says, I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. To the end of the earth. Now, 
I'm going to tell you this. This is a bunch of Jewish boys, okay? Who's the only good people in the world? The Jewish people. And you want me to go to them? Yeah. You want me to go to the other side of town, Jesus? Jesus, certainly you don't want me to serve in another country. I mean, certainly you don't want me to serve with people that don't look like me. There, now, hold on. Jesus, you mean to tell me you want me to serve people that are, um, maybe they don't um, do the same things I do. Maybe they got addictions. Is that what you want me to do? And Jesus looks at these Jewish boys here that are all clean and following the law and all these things. He says, now you guys go tell those other people. Amen. Wow. He destroys nationality here. He destroys the borders here and opens up the national church, the worldwide church. Some powerful, powerful, powerful testimony here. Then he makes another promise. Uh, well, the, um, God does. So this, this angel does. The, God does through these people. I won't call them angels. I don't know who they were. But these people testified to another promise. Amen. He's coming Amen, back. Brother. He's coming back. We'll learn a lot more about that as we move on uh, in, in the whole New Testament. But I'm going to turn over to the pastor. And I love the way he said this, this same Jesus, this same Jesus, in the, in the same way that you've seen him taken away from you, he's coming again. Guys, I, I, I believe, I believe just, I'm going to take it for just what's written here. I believe that on that day, that second coming of Christ, I, that, that the first, when he comes back, amen, to this earth to take his seat on the throne there in Jerusalem, I believe he's going to come down. I believe he's going to set his foot right there on the Mount of Olives where he, where he mm. lifted away from, and I believe he'll walk through the Kidron Valley just like he walked out of the city of Jerusalem. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And that gate that the Muslims have concreted up with rebar and a graveyard planted in front they of it. Keep amen. Coming in. They think that's going to keep the Messiah mm -hmm. from coming right. in because surely the man of God won't walk across these unholy things. I got news for you, amen. That's He's right. going to make his way into Jerusalem. He's going to do just what the Bible says. He'll take his rightful place on the throne of David, and he will rule his people. Going to be a great, great. This same Jesus you saw taken away from you, he's coming again in like manner. That's, that's exciting to me. That scripture is yep. exciting to me. And I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to take verses 12 through 17. We're going to read. Um, that, guys, that's our marching orders. That's right. And that, that's what the, uh, the angel or the two men here dressed in white, they came back and said, Look, look, you guys need to get busy. Brother Donnie, you need to you need to get busy. Right. He he's already given the church their marching orders, and he expects us just like he did then, Amen. To get to get out of our comfort zone, to get out of there, and and go out and tell folks about the Lord. But here we find Matthias is chosen to replace Judas in verse twelve. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered in, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip. Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were one, in one accord and were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those mm -hmm. days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture has to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, which became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now, it's looking back again, looking back again uh, up to verse 12, the Bible says, and they answer, or they returned again to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. Uh, this is a, it mentions, this is a half a day, this is a Sabbath day journey. It's about a half a mile uh, because of the law. The laws that were were tacked onto the Ten Commandments by by the Pharisees. You could now only walk two thousand paces, I believe it was, which come up to about a half a mile. And even even they were being obedient though. Here it says they returned to Jerusalem just like Jesus had told them to, just like the two men had told them to. The Bible says that obedience is greater than any sacrifice. And in verse thirteen, it says they go back. They go back to this upper room. I believe with all my heart this is the very same upper room that the Lord's Supper was held in just a, just a while back, a little over a month ago. I believe it's the very same room that they went into. I agree, preacher. I mean, for it to be so nondescript as if yeah. it was a place they always went to. And he says, in each time that I found it, it says go back to the upper room, to mm -hmm. the upper room. It doesn't say a upper room. It That's doesn't right. say find another one. And, and I'm just going to take it for what it says. I'm going to read here. So take it somebody's it faithful enough somebody's to the disciples faithful. to... Amen. They got if, some, you, if you're not able to do anything else for Jesus, maybe maybe you have means to support 
you know, things like that. You know, that makes me think Amen. about that. I and mean, there's somebody there who had the means. And this is, you had mentioned, this is a this. large upper this room. It's got to right? be a big place. I mean, it's a pretty big, pretty big opening. Living it in the room of a sound booth. A hundred. <laughs> not that room. No. Not I that wish room. we could show that to you. They didn't yeah, need it. Not that room. But there's 120 people large gathered room. here. There's 120 people gathered in this upper room. And uh, I, I wrote, wrote some notes down. It's a large room. There's no doubt it's on the second floor. They, they, this would be a place where the dining would be held because mm -hmm. they would prepare the meals and in the evening they would go up there and it would be cool because you're higher up, the, ble the breeze is blowing. And, and in most cases, probably there, just like in other places that I've seen, it would, a lot of times it would, wouldn't have a roof. Now, some do have roofs, mm -hmm. some don't have roofs, but it would be a much cooler place for you to spend the evening. And uh, anyway, there's a large gathering here, about 120 people. The 11, 11 disciples are there. And it says women. I got to believe if there was any of those that were married or any of the followers, the men that were married, that's where the women and, and, the, and the followers, they come into place here. And it also says Mary, the mother of Jesus was there. Guys, and I, I want to I throw something in here, and I got it underlined in my Bible. And it says, and his brothers, mm -hmm. and his brothers. No, Donald, up until here, up until now, up until after Jesus' resurrection, you don't hear anything about Jesus' brothers. That's right. I believe they see Jesus just as their brother and you know, uh, who does he think he is? We grew up with him, and they don't get it like other right. folks get it. And I'm do you do your Bible study this where it says, and his brothers, his brothers are now present. The Bible makes a, a comment too that James, James didn't really believe until after Jesus' resurrection. That passage that we went to in first and second Corinthians a minute ago then mentioned James right after that. I, I just noticed that whenever you read that, and it says, and even James, and even James, and, and even James. James. But this is this is a great great Bible study. In in verse fourteen here it says, I'm, I'm gonna, "Let me read it. Let me read verse 14. And it says here, "All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and the Mary and brother Jesus and his brother." It says they were all together, one accord, mind on the same thing, and they had devoted their time to prayer, to prayer. The women, the men, the disciples, the followers. All these 120 folks, they were up there for the same reason. They were waiting on the promise. And we find that each one of them, every one of them is devoting themselves to prayer. Thinking about the same thing. Not like most church services. Most times we get together, you got mm -hmm. one person thinking about what's for lunch. you got yeah. another person thinking about more. Well, the football game's coming on in 20 we got. minutes. But all these folks, they had devoted themselves to prayer and they had their mind in one place. And it was on the promise that was coming. And and I it says, say something. Yes, sir. And I don't, I don't know brother. this. I'm only reading a note from this particular Bible I have, but it mentions this. When it mentions Jesus' brothers, it says the Greek word for that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but this Greek word didn't necessarily mean just brothers. There's a possibility, depending on the usage, this, this could have mean brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And so I, I, just the impact. The, Jesus had impact on his family. <laughs> Hallelujah. And... and um, this is from a guy who struggles with this. Yeah. You may not see, you may not see that you're making a difference, but I promise you are. You Amen. keep living that life. You keep being that that Christian. Keep being that light. Amen. Keep putting salt out there. I'm I'm telling you, they'll yeah. notice. You be that example in front of your family. So preacher, they're not listening to me. Uh, and guys, we know this. Most of the time, family is the hardest ones to reach. But it is still, it is still. We have an opportunity and an obligation to live a life. Because if anyone knows you, your family knows you. Yep. They know you. They know you. And you've got to live that example, that Christ-like example before them. Well, apparently, Jesus has them convinced now. He's seen them. They have seen him die and resurrect. Mm -hmm. And still he's preaching the gospel. And I want you to notice in verse 15, Peter, Peter takes a step now. It says, in those days, Peter stood up among the brothers and the company, the persons, all about 120 of them. He said, brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. He led them there. Guys, we'll, see, we'll find here that Peter, Peter's standing, he's standing unashamed now. Mm -hmm. Just a little, mm -hmm. just a few days earlier, just about a month earlier, man, when he had betrayed the Lord, he couldn't have done this. He was ashamed. He fell on his face. Amen. Ask God to forgive him. But he's standing unashamed here now. And he's standing in a, in a leadership role. He tried to be that before. But, Brother Donald, I see wisdom now here. I see I him. Yeah. He's standing in a totally different way. He's standing in, He's standing with Jesus. Now, not just he's standing by Jesus or for Jesus. He's standing, I believe, here with the Lord. 
He Verse, began he began by quoting scripture and mentioning the Holy Spirit. That's a good not, idea right there. Not what I think. Or what right. do you think about this guy? He, he brings the word of God. Like out. Dennis says, what does the Bible say? <laughs> That's there it, you. Brother Dennis. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for that. But verse verse 16, verse 16 here, it says, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Prophecy, once again, has been fulfilled here. And you can check that out in Psalm 41, in Psalm 41. But this is prophecy, again, being fulfilled. In verse 17, it says, For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. That's Judas was family. Mm -hmm. Judas was family to these these eleven, yeah. to Jesus. They, he he was family. He was one of us. He was chosen, even though he's chosen. You know, Jesus says just a little earlier, he says, "I've chosen you all, but one of you is the devil. One of you is a devil." I, I believe Judas was, no doubt, Judas was easily persuaded of anything concerning the Jewish people. Mm. You, you, if you get one or two people to jump up, say, you know, start a pep rally or whatever for anything Jewish, I believe Judas would have been the first one there. Guys, read your Bible and study. Judas didn't want Jesus to die. That's not why he, he, he took those 30 pieces of silver. He didn't want to betray him. He did. He wanted to turn him in. But he believed, he believed mm -hmm. just what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm going to take, I'm going to be the king. And he mm -hmm. is the king. That's right. right. He's the suffering servant, but you got to you got to remember that. That's but right. Judas wanted to put him into a position where he had to to show his power. He had to do something, Amen. Because they were going to arrest him. Judas never intended for the Lord to die. That's not what he intended. Right. There's a lot of things that we do that we don't intend the results. The only thing I can tell you, the only advice I can give you, if you'll stay close to Jesus, if you'll be be spirit led, Amen. I'll probably I'll promise you the consequences, all the things that come after will be far, far better, far better than anything when we try to go and do it on our own. Don't ever try to rush the Lord. If we can learn something from that, don't try to rush mm -hmm. the Lord here. I believe he's still looking for his self, his, his self-interest, which is no doubt the, the Jewish interest. And uh, But Peter tells him he, he was part of our ministry. He was one of us. And So they he, wanted Jesus to be money. the king he of the Jews. To... Instead of the king of the world, yeah. yeah, that's what he's trying to tell him. That's he said, good, I'm, I'm, I want to be the man. king of the world, man. I am the king, I am the king, but you're missing it here. Yes, and you're missing, I didn't say I'd be your personal king, not in the sense of your that. Let me say it again, oh, he's your, he your personal king, but he's not, he's not man, your servant, good. you're his servant. He is the king, you don't have to like the way he's the king, yeah. but he's the king. No, I get caught up in little things, man. I get caught up in. God, this is what I need you to do in Darlington. This that's is what right. I need you to do yeah. at Temple. God, this is what, and if, God, mm -hmm. God's got a plan for the whole world, not just not just here. And, and I do. I get lost. I get Pastor, lost we tell them. We tell them, God, if you just take care of this in Darlington, could you imagine the things that we could do? Yes, sir. I know. <laughs> I know, brother. <laughs> Pray for us. Yes, sir. Go, go ahead, brother. I believe it. 18, pick up an 18. I'm going to pick an 18. I'm going to finish the chapter out. And it says, Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all its bowels gushed out, and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akodama. And preacher, we mentioned this. Why can't it just be in our language, that word? <laughs> we don't understand that, guys. And maybe you guys do, but why can't the proper nouns just stay like they are? Why can't they just... When I hear other people mention, say they mentioned Pepsi Cola, they may be speaking another language, and they say, la, 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 Pepsi Cola. And then they give it to the other language. Why can't it be like that? Anyway, but for whatever reason, Luke <laughs> clears that up. Don't know why, but um, because he, he clears up. It says, that is filled of blood. Yep. In verse 24, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another, another take, take his place. office. That's the important part. Let another yeah. take his office. Okay. It says, so one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Now, this is, this is Luke talking. He's saying, so one of the men that had been accompanying us Yep. You thought there's just 12 in Jesus. It's 12 in Jesus all the time. Jesus is crazy. Here comes this. It's their turn. Jesus and the 12 will be here tonight at church. Jesus and the 12 will be here. That next week, they're going to be at Bethany. <laughs> you know, No, there's lots of followers a of Christ. Huge following, a huge following. And so it says, and then, uh, so one of the men who have accompanied us uh, during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, all the time, beginning from the baptism of John, Okay, until the day when he was taken up from us. So the entire ministry of Jesus. That's right. Then it says, there's a big hyphen there. It says, 
one of us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. I'm going to stop there for a minute. It says, what at first, what they first did was they qualified the person. Yes, sir. They didn't just look out there and say, okay, which one of these guys was going to take Judah's place? Who do you like the best? Who do you like? Yeah, let's vote. <laughs> let's, let's have the nominations in by next week. We'll go to the committee and then we'll bring it back to you after we talk to them. No, sir. No. No. They, they said, let's find somebody who's been with us the whole time, been with Jesus the whole time. It makes him an eyewitness, by the way. Let's find someone who can testify to it. And they put forward two. Two names. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice. Three names. And Matthias. I wonder <laughs> if he put all three in the head. I don't know. But anyway, so we had these two guys. Okay. And they prayed and said, Lord, you, Lord, who know the hearts of all, yep. show which of these uh, two you have chosen to take the place in the ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. Keep in mind, these two were fully qualified. Yes, sir. I don't think they were looking for the best one. They were looking for the one that God wanted. Amen. I believe they were totally qualified, totally sold out. In fact, I know they were. You weren't just in this upper room if you were halfway in. I promise you that. You were, you were sold out. You were waiting on the promise of Christ. One mile, one That's exactly right. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now, I'll let the preacher talk about this lots in a moment here. <laughs> You can call it what you want. You can let people dispute what you want with it. I don't think there's anything funky going on mm -hmm. here. I think they're just trying to let God decide. Absolutely. Trying to let God decide, however. And if you think, here's what, here's what some say, so they left it to chance. Nope. I'm going to call baloney on that because there's no such thing as chance. If you serve God, you believe that God providentially holds the world in His hands and knows everything that ever happened, everything that will happen, then there is no such thing as chance. Amen, bro. Even if you think you roll the dice, even if you just jump across the road and say, well, maybe this time I get hit by a car, even if you pull the machine and you think, well, then maybe this time I get sevens because I'm, I'm just lucky today, you can call it what you want. But if you believe that God knows everything that's ever happened, everything that will happen, and He's providentially informed, there's no such thing amen, as chance. Amen, amen. You can play it however you want to. But there is no such thing as chance. Now, your opportunities will run out. Okay? You can play that. You can roll those dice. But there is no such thing as chance with my God. I don't need to do anything else other than agree with you, brother. I'm telling you, I totally 100% agree. You're spirit-led. You're where you're supposed to be. If you're in one mind and one accord like these folks are in this upper room, I'll promise you it doesn't matter. Whatever means, it's going to be spirit-led. God's hand's going to be in it, just like it was when this blessed book That's was written. Right. This is not a game of chance. When they, when they cast lots, it was totally God. It was totally God. Can I say one more thing? Please. Pastor, do you think that that um, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice? But you know when his mama said Justice, Barsabbas, <laughs> Justice. Justice. He's in trouble. Joseph, Barsabbas, Justice. Uh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's what to say. <laughs> But do you think that he just quit and said, I'm not serving anymore? No, sir. I don't not think sir. so. You think it changed much of what he was doing? No. Nah. I think he was still sold out for Jesus. That's exactly right. I think he might not have been on the board that year. I think he might not have been voted in to, to be the um, the head honcho over whatever. He might not have got voted in to cut the grass or to do the to do the decorating or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what he did probably do. He probably still served Christ Amen. just as hard as he did before. He didn't get mad and leave. I don't think he got mad and left, preacher. I don't Amen. think so. I think... I think he said, I've been there the whole time. I was with Jesus, and I can still be a witness in Samaria, Judea, and Jerusalem, one of those places, just like I've been called to do. By the way, when Jesus gives those words, you say, well, Jesus said it to the disciples. Yeah, he did, but he had to have said them to you, and I'll tell you why. Without other people following that command, the gospel dies. Yes. Yes. Think about that. These disciples, in fact, Paul mentioned in Corinthians, he says some are already sleeping. Okay. Well, they're all gone now. Yep. Even John died. He might have died about last week, but he died. Okay, even John died. It took him a little while. But what I'm telling you is that if we haven't followed this calling, then the church would be gone. We know the church is never going to be gone, but that's, that's right. because of the people. That's because of the people that are still following this command to the other more sparse of the world. Earth. And again, verse 24 says, And they prayed and said, Lord, you know the hearts of all, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put what... Please show us which one of these guys you want. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't. <laughs> we do our very best to seek God's will. Amen. For temple, for for our lives, for our family, for yeah. we do the best we can and pray and ask God to please lead us and guide us, Lord. 
bottom line, God, please show me because I yeah. don't know. I want your will to be done more than anything in this world. Guys, I pray that you uh, received uh, encouragement. And you were blessed by God's word, not by us, but That's by right. God's word today. The Bible says God's word is what changes people. Right? Right. We can sit here and tell you uh, pretty stories or we could have you sobbing and, and broken hearted and you move on your emotions and feelings. Guys, that's not what saves people. The word of God, the word of God is what changes lives, changes hearts of men, women and boys and girls. And we pray and hope that you've been blessed by God's word. We do want to look at our prayer list, guys. Thank you again for for studying the Bible with us, looking over these scriptures. We're going to begin, are we going to stay with this and go to Acts 2 next week? It's your turn, Call. Let's go to Acts 2 Acts next two, week. There we so go. Guys be studying I didn't have Acts to ask two. him. And, uh, <laughs> and be praying, and be praying for us. <laughs> Acts chapter 2 next week. We do want to look at a prayer list, guys, please. If you have some names, if you have some prayer uh, requests that you have not sent in yet, would you do that right now, please? And uh, Sister yes. Lauren will make sure that she gets those to us, as, uh, and we'll we'll mention those before we're before we get off of here, and we'll pray over these names. But we want to take our our prayer list from our bulletin, and uh, which is getting very lengthy, guys. By the way, and please don't don't get upset or mad with us if week from week maybe a name falls off that you that you know needs to still be on there. Please don't get upset with us. Just just call in or type in and let us know we need to add it back. Okay, but it's getting pretty lengthy here, and. Uh, for, for we, we, we want to make sure we pray for everyone. Starting with with our prayer list, the bulletin. Alexis, God knows the need. God knows the need there. This is concerning a, a, a baby that was, was stillborn. But uh, Miss B. Siner, we're praying for you. We pray you're doing well. Mr. Kelly, let's do continue to lift up Mr. Joe in our prayers. Miss Cindy Smith, let's remember her. I talked to Miss Judy Cox just a few minutes ago, less than an hour ago. And... Uh, she is there in Charleston at MUSC, and because of this situation, mm -hmm. all by herself, like other family members, and you may have a family member like that, please pray for Miss Judy. She needs our prayers, and uh, pray for her family. RJ, RJ O'Neill, we we'll, we'll continue to pray for you. Miss Joan Morris, I need to move that down to families of. She, she did pass away, and I ask you to please remember the Morris family in your prayers. Uh, the Campbell family. Miss Deborah Lyons, Miss Deborah got to ring the bell. Hallelujah. I believe it was on yesterday. We're so, so glad about that. We, we're still praying for you. Anthony Ard, the Carlson family, I believe they got a new one. Mm -hmm. a new, a they new do. One. Amen. Uh, the Chandler family, uh, Mr. Perry Frierson, let's remember him. Uh, all the frontline workers in the, with this, this virus thing, let's do remember all those folks. Miss Karen Harwood, Brother Sammy and Sister Jane Nance. Please do remember free ministry over in Green Sea. Brother Jim Boudreaux and his, his dear wife and all those folks. Miss Christine Brewer, we pray she's doing well. Miss Kim McGee, Shadrach James, until they find him until, or until he comes home. Uh, the Jackson family, the Seeger family, Gail and Ken Roulette, Miss Darlene Jackson and family. Good news about Miss Darlene, amen. I know she won't mind, and I'm going to share it because it'll strengthen us in our walk for Christ. Miss Darlene Jackson, amen, gave her heart and life That's to Jesus right. in our in our drive-in service, mm -hmm. amen, right out in the parking lot. Hallelujah. The That's king right. is still on the throne, and he's still saving folks. Yes, and sir. We praying for you. The Starnes family, uh, Mr. Doug Ruark, let's do remember him. Uh, Terry Westbrook, several, several unspoken. The Odom family, all the employees out at Honda. Uh, Randolph Andrews, Laverne Grooms our missions uh, at home and foreign while we're there. Continue to pray for Brother Carlisle Hanna. He is doing much better, but continue to pray for him. Uh, they're going to try and see if they can't get him home. Uh, faithful giving to the church, your time, talent, and tithes. Our Miss Tammy McKnight, please remember her. Yep. Mr. Valerie MacArthur and Brother Scott, as they continue to be there in Chicago for treatments, so let's lift them up. Miss Teresa Garrison, praying, praying for her. Uh, Nick Stokes, Melissa Poston, Miss Myrtle Turner, Sister Doris, hey girl, Sister Doris and Renee and Jason, praying for you guys. Mr. Larry Coker, Sarah Demick, Miss Shannon Carroll, Daphne Dickerson, Miss Eloise Taylor, Miss Kathy Nephew, the Cunningham family, the Nichols family, the Dawson family, Joey Boatwright, 
and TCA, our, our, our school here at Temple, Temple Christian Academy. Please do remember these names. Say, preacher, that's a lot of names to, to call out. That's kind of redundant. And that's kind of, I promise you, if it was one of your family members, you'd want that's us right. to take time to call that name out. And, uh, and I'm that's praying right. and asking you to ask God to help you to see these names and to pray for these names, just like if it was one of your family members. I can't heal them. You can't heal them either. But I tell you what I can do. I can I can call on the one that can, mm. the needs that, that are that are needed here. Uh, Miss Mary Stump, Mr. Donnie Small, the Jimmy Blackman and the Galloway sisters in our nursing care, all of our ministries here at Temple, uh, families who have recently lost loved ones, the Rogers family, the Cook family, the Chapman family, the Farber family, friend of mine that passed away this week mm-hmm. of a massive heart attack, and uh, the Morris family. Our homebound folks, Miss Joanne McKnight, Miss Annabelle Boyd, Sister Annette Chapman, Brother Gus and Sister Betty Batista, and Miss Billy Ann Williams. And that's, I have one other name. Guys, we received a prayer request. Just let me, that name, Brother Donald. That's a tough one. Miss mm-hmm. Donna Hartzell. Miss Donna Hartzell. I promise you, we're, we're praying. We're praying for you in your needs. Any other names that were added, Brother Donald? If I missed anybody, please forgive me, but I have the Mumpus family, Miss Angie Brewer. We got your prayer request. We got the one for Winford Flowers family. Um, I got the one for Skeeter Elliott there. Um, Richard Thank Kelly, I know you didn't ask it, but remember Miss Johnny? Remember her? Um, Joanne Atkinson, we got yours, ma'am. Uh, Miss Darlene Brown, we have yours. We have Amy Grace. And I ask that you pray for the young people this summer. We had to cancel youth camp. We made that decision yesterday. Uh, not an easy decision, but we felt like it was the right one. And um, I'm going to tell you this, pray for our young people because I'm going to do something, something with our young people this summer to try to keep them involved and keep them engaged. I don't know what we'll do this summer, but um, we're going to look forward to doing something in place of youth camp. So pray for that. Pray for our young people. Pray for our schools. They were all closed for the year today. Yep. Yep. And uh, pray, for the, pray for the parents. Pray for the parents who were having to help them study. And I put the grocery bill. <laughs> I've, every parent I've talked to Amen. told about they eat everything. So pray for them. Pray for them. Those are needs. Sister Estelle, we're, we're praying for you and Skeeter. We're praying for you. You know, you guys got a lot going on. And uh, please let please let him know that uh, we'll continue to lift him up to the Lord. Also, Miss Amy Grace. I'm sorry, don't let me hear, let me hear you. Miss Rachel mentioned that to me. Amy Grace, a procedure coming up and up. Uh, there, that's another one, guys. All these loved ones, these family members are going to have to go through these procedures by themselves. That's that's tough. That's mm-hmm. tough. Tough for them. It is. But man, it's tough for the family that's sitting at home too, wishing with everything within them that they could be there with their loved ones. So please yeah. pray for these needs, guys. We're going to just a couple more minutes. If you if you have a, a prayer request that we can help you pray about, you're welcome. Anybody else? I'll also say this, and then we won't necessarily do this, but while we're giving a few moments for those that mentioned prayer requests, maybe you've got a particular chapter or passage in the Bible you'd yeah. like for us to go through. I'm not promising you that we'll do it <laughs> live like this, but I'm promising you we will consider we'll it. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> we'll consider it. Okay, so if you give me Leviticus chapter 8, we're probably going to say no. <laughs> but if you would give us something that you think uh, is, would be um, helpful, maybe it'll help you and help some others. We'd love to address it and talk about it. Yeah, maybe even some questions, guys. Maybe some questions. We're not going to do it on the spot now. We're not going to do it on the spot. We may. Rather not. You send them in this week, and we'll do it for next week because we want to make sure the answer we give you is is spirit led, and uh, it w- won't be anything out of out of what Don thinks. Lisa, we got your prayer request for Kathy Brown with bronchitis. Got that? Amen. Anyone else? Would you stay with us? Stay with us just a minute, guys. Like I say, and I, I don't mean to over and over, but if this was your family, someone in your mm-hmm. family, you'd, you'd, you'd want folks taking time. And I, I believe it's very, very important. I'm going to mention my father-in-law. This is Molly's dad. He got, he got bad results at the doctor this week, and they found cancer in two more places in his body. And I ask you to pray for him. Pray for Joe. Yes. And he, he's, it's a tough time right now for my, for my wife and her family, for me. Yeah. But more so for them, and uh, they got some some tests coming back and some tests to do. And um, I know you say, "Well, it's just cancer; they they can fix that." And I agree. I hope they can. I hope they can. But just just pray for that. Miss Patty, we praying for you. We're praying for you and your family. No, I appreciate that. And I was I was sharing with Molly. I remember, I remember that that day where I got that that news as I was standing there with my mom in Charleston, and uh, 
There's many out there just watching. It's going to watch this later, maybe watching live now. That you've been to that place. You've been you've been there with a loved one, or, or you've been the one that's been given that news, and how how devastating it was. And uh, we're, we're praying for you, and we want to pray for you. So let us know. Let us know. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and pray. I'm gonna ask you not to just listen to me, if you would, where you are, there in your home, in your car, wherever you may be. I pray that you would you would bow your head right now. I know you can't remember all these names. I know that, but God can. And the ones that you can remember, call them out and pray for us as well. Okay. Jimmy Griggs, family, we got that, Miss Rachel. Jimmy Griggs, thank you. Go ahead, thank you. Pastor. Let's pray, guys. Please join us. Father, I love you. Lord God, and I know that if anything good was done here this evening, God, it's not because of anyone gathered here. It's all because of you and your word. Mm -hmm. I thank you for the honor and the privilege, God, to, to come around, Brother Donald, God, Brother Steve, Sister Lauren, God, as we sit here and, and try our best, God, to be an encouragement to other folks to, to share from your word, Lord, and to, God, just, just, just brag on your son. I pray now that you would take our, our, our meager efforts, God, and I pray that you'd bless it, pray you'd multiply it, God, many times. I gotta believe that there's somebody out there, Lord, that doesn't know you or are not in the place that they need to be with you. And uh, I, I believe that your spirit right now, God, is even moving on them. Just like you're about to move in this next chapter. I pray that you'd move upon people, Lord, this evening. Those that aren't saved that need a savior, God, I pray that they'd be convicted, Lord, to call on you even this evening. I thank you for what you've done. In our, in our drive-in service, God, of, of salvation, God, that's been recorded. <laughs> One more for Jesus. That's right. A new name written in glory. And Father, we thank you so much for that. We ask you now, Lord, to, to meet the needs of everyone that we've mentioned, God. All these folks on this paper, Lord. All these folks in this box right here before us, God. So many names and needs. God, families that are broken. God, I pray there's a there's a young man, Lord Jesus, who's away from home right now. Just a, just a young fella. God, and he's in trouble. Trouble in the family, Lord. And I pray for him. God, you know who he is and where he is, God. And I pray for his family. I pray that you'd meet that need, God. And I pray that the place he is, God, that, that through them, Lord Jesus, God, that you would help him. God, that he may be able to get back home. I pray for his mom and dad. Father, I pray now for our church folks. I pray that you'd uh, lift them up, encourage them. I pray for all, again, all the sick, all the needs, every, every name that's mentioned tonight, Lord. Please, in Jesus' name. God, we're praying to you in Jesus' name under the direction of the Spirit. Please, please meet the needs of these folks, Lord. Thank you for our families. Thank you for keeping us safe, God. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Guys, again, please uh, send us, if you've got a question, maybe we'll look at that next week and maybe we'll come up with an answer for you. You can put it right on this the same comments of this uh, this feed, this, this Facebook Live session, and we'll try our best to do something about that for next week. But uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we, we love you. Brother Donald, you got anything? We're going to update Miss Judy Cox. There's a question. She... She went to Charleston last week. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. she was going to have her pacemaker moved from one side to the other um, again and um, treat some infection around that. And uh, it's just really taxing on her, really, really, really taxing. I talked to her the day before yesterday, and she sounded much, much better. But still, still, she may have had the procedure today or maybe tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Pray for that. She's very, very weak, though, guys. Please, please lift her up in prayer. All right, if nothing else, we hope to see you guys next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. But do remember our drive-in services on Sunday at 11 o'clock, drive-in mm -hmm. services here, and again at 6 o'clock. We are having a canned food and dry goods uh, food drive with uh, Flat Creek and ourselves. So please, if you'd like to bring something by, we'll have something out under the, the portico, the carport, and uh, you can drop that off at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning or six o'clock Sunday evening. Do remember you can we'll have someone out an hour before service, every service. If you'd like to drop off your ties and pick up a bulletin and any other 
Sunday school material that we may have or devotional mm -hmm. material, we'll be more than happy to get that for you. Absolutely. And uh, Brother Steve, if you would, one more time, if you put that link down for our Give LaFi, and I promise you, I'm closing on this. People of God, Temple family and friends, thank you so much yep. for being faithful. Yes, yes, it yes. has been absolutely amazing. And we thank you from the bottom of my heart for being faithful. Now, we got a job to do. we got marching orders from the king. Amen. Let's get busy telling folks about Jesus. We love you, and God bless you. Good night. See you later.